Hey everyone, today we have Kunal Agarwal here from Unravel Data, and he's going to give us a demo of their product. For those that don't know, Unravel Data is a data ops vendor that provides an application performance management solution for big data. The solution tracks, correlates, and interprets performance data across the full stack in order to optimize, troubleshoot, and analyze from a single pane. Okay guys, take it away. Thank you so much, Henry. So I'm the co-founder and CEO of Unravel, and we're simplifying data ops uh, in a number of different ways. Uh, but at the crux of it, Unravel is all about making sure that your big data applications are fast and reliable, and your entire data, big data infrastructure and setup is cost efficient uh, and highly utilized as well. Uh, so just quick background about Unravel. Uh, we are a team that's founded of a number of big data practitioners and leaders in the industry uh, from companies that are uh, commercializing big data technologies such as Hadoop, Spark, Kafka, et cetera, from Cloudera, Hortonworks. Uh, a lot of our research work was actually done at Duke University when we first started out. A lot of companies are actually using Unravel in production. We have about 100 million applications that we've currently analyzed across all of these different customers, uh, from large banks, financial institutions, to healthcare companies and high-tech companies. Uh, we support about uh, 10,000 plus uh, big data machines that we have under the Unravel support today. And Unravel is backed by a number of uh, top tier VC firms here in Silicon Valley, uh, Microsoft Ventures, Menlo Partners, as well as GGV Capital. Uh, so in a nutshell, what we do in Unravel is uh, we provide our customers a single pane of glass. Uh, it's a rather uh, you know, overused term, but with big data, it, the, the need for it could not be uh, more true because you have multiple systems that create a big data stack, uh, and Unravel monitors and manages all of these different systems. Um, we don't just give our customers graphs and metrics for performance data, uh, but you'll see in one of our examples over here on the application side that we actually help auto-tune and auto-remediate a lot of these commonly occurring problems that happen on this big data stack. And on the operations side, Unravel also has very fine-grained visibility into resource, data, and user utilization of the cluster which can be used for a variety of different purposes from chargeback reports and usage analytics uh, to even cost savings report or a migration plan if you're trying to switch between environments. And last but not the least, uh, we use big data technologies ourselves to be able to make the big data team or the data ops team more proactive. And I'll show you in, the, uh, in one of these examples today as well in how we could resolve problems even before they hairball into a bigger issue uh, and how Unravel uses machine learning and AI within of the software to be able to drive some of these features. So before we jump into the demo, I just want to familiarize ourselves with, when I say the big data stack, uh, it's really this typical uh, merger of different systems that companies put together uh, in order to drive value from their big data. Uh, you may have certain tools for data collection and data ingestion, such as Scoop and Kafka, uh, you may be storing this data on HDFS or S3, um, running a variety of different types of systems on top of it, such as uh, Spark, Hadoop, Edgebase, Impala, et cetera, all for the purpose of driving value in what we call apps. And these apps could be anything from a complicated report uh, to a machine learning algorithm uh, to a connected cars or any other IoT application just simple BI analytics in the form of SQL queries, and so on and so forth. So a typical you know, couple of scenarios that people run in, uh, run into when they're running these big data systems is, you, know, you have these data engineers and data scientists creating applications in a dev environment and then running them in a production environment on top of these big data ecosystems. And they say, hey, you know, my app is failing or my app is super slow today, uh, I wanna go and fix that. And then you have the operations people who are sitting down at the center of it all, uh, who are getting all these inbound requests from the end consumers of big data. They, they too may be looking at some of these problems around resource contention, capacity planning, et cetera, or even everyday troubleshooting issues such as, 
why has a mission critical machine learning app missed its SLA, missed its service level agreements that you know, we may have set with an outside customer and said, we will give you these results in X minutes. Uh, but today, it's not, it's not following that pattern. Now, let's look at one of these problems. So Tom's problem was probably with a Spark application um, that, that is running slow. And how would Tom go about resolving that problem today without a tool like Unravel? Um, now, there's multiple reasons why a application could be slow or why an application could be failing. And these reasons could be multiple fold from resource problems to how he wrote the code to the configuration settings uh, that this application took to actually proce uh, process on the cluster uh, to the data layout and the RDDs and the caching, et cetera, you know, that, that Tom actually provided for that particular application. So today, Tom would have to jump around in a system monitoring tool, like the one you see here in front of you, which is giving information about cluster CPU utilization, disk utilization, and on the left side, you see if the services are working or not working. So in this case, Tom Spark app, uh, there's no information about that app, but at least you can get some information about, hey, yeah, Spark has a service is up and running over here. I've got a green light next to it. Uh, the cluster seems to be okay. Uh, it's not at 100% in utilization. Uh, but then there's no information particularly about his app over here. And then he has to jump into another screen, um, you know, popular one like a Spark UI, for example. Uh, but if you look at the screen, it says, hey, are the tasks completed or not completed? Uh, but why is it slow? That information is again lacking over here. Not to mention, this screen is showing Tom information at a component level instead of tying up these several components and showing him the view that he needs as his app level. Uh, Tom may have hundreds of different components that comprise his entire app, and he would have to jump into hundreds of such screens to go and figure out what really happened, and even these screens don't provide that complete information. Tom may then have to go into logs. Uh, job tracker, task tracker, give you some more information about your application. And these logs come in, again, thousands of screens. And Tom would, again, have to connect the dots, stitch up the story to go and figure out, is it a code level issue? Is it a resource level issue? Is it a container level issue? Is it something to do with data layout, et cetera, et cetera? And then Tom may also have other tools in his arsenal, uh, you know, general purpose monitoring tools, uh, which again provides you more and more and more metrics. Uh, we want to show you now how Unravel helps people like Tom resolve issues like this. So you would come into the Unravel interface, which is now monitoring and managing all the applications that are running on your cluster. Uh, it could be a Hive application, Impala, Spark, Fig, Uzi based applications, which may be doing AI, machine learning, IoT, doesn't matter. And in this case, Tom will be able to find his application very easily, jump into it. And what he's presented with is a view, first and foremost, that's the best view to understand what's happening with his application with all those different angles in mind. How is the code doing? Uh, how is, are the resources doing? How is the data layout and partitioning doing? Were my configuration settings okay? So if you bring your attention to this page, you will see that Unravel has the app itself and then all the components of the app underneath it to be able to further drill down and understand what each of these different components did. We also have very excellent views to be able, for Tom to be able to correlate his code to how his code actually ran on the cluster. A lot of times, Programmers may not have the information around, yeah, I wrote a piece of Scala code, that's what I understand, but how did this code actually execute into a distributed computing application? may be hard to understand. So just by a click of a button, Unravel actually correlates which uh, execution pattern here correlates to which line of code, and that may help it further drill down and troubleshoot and understand what his issues actually are. Uh, but Unravel takes it a step further. Uh, Unravel has all these resource graphs and understanding of how containers were used and data was used, et cetera. 
But what we figured is we wanted to connect the dots for Tom so that Tom doesn't waste a lot of time trying to drill down and firefight these issues. Instead, he can come over here and say, hey, this application is taking 27 minutes to run. Unravel's got three recommendations in which I can improve that. And upon clicking here, Unravel actually gives Tom the changes that he needs to make in order to make this application run faster and or in order to make this run, application run more efficiently. Efficiently meaning not using too many resources on the cluster. So Unravel has done all the checks and analysis that a big data expert would do, and it's telling you, hey, there are some configuration settings that are the problem in this particular case. And these configuration settings, as Tom knows, are probably five or 600 of these settings. And we shortlisted and said, hey, go and change these settings from this value to this particular value. We run this app, and this app will run much better. Not only that, we actually explained to Tom in plain English, why did we even come up with those values? So Tom can become a better programmer, he can become a better data engineer, and not repeat the similar problems that he's had in the past, and also get a good view of understanding you know, what are some common problems and inefficiencies with big data applications, right? So let me walk you through some of these. For example, we're saying, hey, your container resources are underutilized. You allocated a certain size and certain number of containers. You're not using that. So if you want to speed up your app, you should use that properly. And the way to do that is to tune a couple of settings around parallelism, around how much memory you're allocating per container, um, et cetera, and Unravel is actually walking you through those kind of things. In addition, you know, maybe there are some code changes that you need to make in order to run this application better. For example, it's saying, hey, uh, in this case, Unravel has figured out there are some RDDs that are worth caching. Don't go and cache everything because that'll fill up your memory again. But if you go and cache this particular RDD, and the way to cache this is go and add this particular statement in front of that line of code, and that alone will save you a ton of time. So Tom can apply these settings, or he can ask Unravel to apply these settings automatically. And that same application that was running in 27 minutes has now uh, shrunk its execution time by 7x to about three minutes. Uh, this is just to show you the vast inefficiencies uh, that these big data applications can actually have. We saw how easy it is to get all this information in one place, or have a correlated intuitive view of these uh, information, and then actually take an action on that to get out of your problem. Now let's look at the other problem, which was Jackie's issue. Jackie is the operations person again. And she got a complaint from a data scientist in this case saying, hey, my machine learning model, which runs every day, today didn't finish on time. What's going on? So we've got very specific views for different types of applications. What we showed you in Tom's example was one Spark app. In, in the case where Jackie has to investigate an issue, this is an app that's actually made up of some MapReduce stages and some Spark stages put together. So the Spark UI in this case wouldn't even help out at all because there are some MapReduce components, maybe there are some HBase components, maybe there are some Kafka components, and Unravel can tie all of these different components up and call it this one app so that Jackie or anybody else can jump inside that and truly figure out what's happening with the application and not with the components of the application. On the right side, Jackie can start our investigation by figuring out how much duration does this app usually take? So it says, it takes an average of about four minutes. Today it's taking 14 minutes, but it's not processing any more data than it usually does. What's going on? On the right side here, you see a instance compare view. So what Unravel does is it ties up every run of this workflow. And what you're seeing here is a duration view saying, these are all the previous runs, and they ran in about three minutes, 20 seconds, three minutes, 10 seconds, but today's run, boom, it just went up to 14 minutes, 51 seconds. What happened? In this case, what Jackie can do is, of course, understand the insights Unravel is bringing to the forefront and saying, hey, out of the hundreds of possible things that can go wrong with this application, today's reason of why it did not perform as well as it usually does is because the wait time to launch application master is very, very bad compared to our baseline model that Unravel has been able to generate. 
And then it says, hey, you can click here to compare against a better run of the same application. So now Jackie can see side by side a good run, which ran in three minutes, and a bad run that ran in 14 minutes and 51 seconds, and see what changed. And if you bring your attention, you'll see that stages that used to take one minute, 23 seconds to run are now taking 11 minutes to run. And this stage that is now taking two minutes, 40 seconds to run, used to take about 32 seconds to run. So there's something going on in why these stages are taking so much time. And Unravel was able to decipher that for you and tell you the reason for that is there's a lot of wait time for these particular resources. So what, what, what we can do next is Jackie can jump in to the Unravel operations dashboard and understand what are the other applications running on the cluster at that time? Uh, who else was stealing all these resources? Are there any alerts that were fired up when this application was running? And she discovers that, hey, there was a rogue application running on the 28th of August at that same time that this app was running. Maybe that caused it. And clicking on that gives you the full context in the system view around, hey, what are the applications that were running at that particular time? And what fired off this alert of a rogue app? And on further investigation, it becomes obvious that there was this user that ran a Spark shell that started hogging 70,000 megabytes of memory, slowing down the job that Jackie's investigating. So we found out over here with one click of a button that there was actual contention happening on the cluster. And that's why that SLA bound application did not finish on time. So what Jackie can now do is actually set up Unravel's auto actions, which is a policy mechanism which automatically takes an action on your behalf. So in this case, you can say, hey, if there is a rogue user uh, that is detected at a time when my SLA bound jobs are running between you know, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. every day on my production cluster only. And if that is detected, I want you to kill that rogue application or I want you to move that bad application to a quarantine queue or I want you to send me an email or the, the application owner an email so that we can be notified and we can resolve these problems uh, in a much faster way rather than facing this problem and then resolving these issues. So these are some few ways in which Unravel is simplifying data ops uh, by giving you the full view and performance intelligence on top of it. The current approach without Unravel to summarize is go to a bunch of different places to go and get all of these little pieces of data and then try to correlate all of these different pieces in your head. It's, it's literally like finding a needle in the haystack. And that takes a lot of time and not only that, that approach may not even provide you accurate results. Instead, what Unravel does is it provides a full stack performance intelligence platform. Full stack meaning it gathers data from applications all the way down to infrastructure and everything in between. But also full stack horizontally meaning Unravel is designed for Hadoop, Spark, Kafka, NoSQL, MPP systems really all the systems that, that make up a big data stack. And once the information comes inside Unravel, we don't just aggregate all this information and show you 500 graphs. We actually correlate all of this information into a more meaningful intuitive uh, form in which you can understand truly what's happening. And we don't stop just there. We actually apply machine learning and artificial intelligence ourselves to be able to uncover these issues, to be able to give you resolution for some of these things. And in, in, in a nutshell, we are allowing users to optimize, which means making your applications faster, making your resources more efficient. We help you troubleshoot, which you just saw today. And last but not the least, actually analyze. So if you had to go back and say, who used the cluster last month, Unravel would be able to give you a very detailed chargeback report, for example. Uh, that's a short demo that I have for you today. To learn more, feel free to go to unraveldata.com where we also have our free 30-day trial. Thank you very much.